How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. on Saturdays with Jim Valley, and Sundays with me. Happy Forbidden Door Sunday. Very soon, the show's going on. And this is a really important show for AEW. This card, I mean, it's humongous, first of all. It shaped into something I did not see happening. Um, I, a lot of these matches, I, I was a little concerned about. We're getting close to the show, and you're not getting these really, you know, forbidden doorish matches. And I think they did okay with some of these. Some of them I don't love, but a lot of them I do. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to be at the show. I'm going to be there. It's 10 minutes, 8 minutes from my house. I'm going to wrap the show up. I'm running out the door. Getting on the Cross Island Parkway. Heading to UBS Arena. It's going to be a fun day. Also, we're going to talk about the bloodline attack on Paul Heyman. Friday night, they were at the Garden. I was there. I was at the Garden. You know, going to a TV taping is so different than a pay-per-view or a house show. The experience is interesting. We'll, we'll talk about this because I want to touch on that today. On um, Just the experience of going and watching wrestling versus uh, a house show or a TV taping. There's so much stop and go with a TV taping. A ton of it. We'll talk about that. Forbidden Door Preview. You're going to get my thoughts on Collision. Also, Tony Khan, here on the Wrestling Observer, did an interview with Brian and Dave. It's posted right now on the website. If you go to f4wonline.com, right on the top, there's a great interview that Tony did with Brian and Dave with, with some, you know, newly discovered insight regarding their TV deal. Uh, you know, they, they, he, he went into some detail here regarding his relationship with WBD and, and the bosses over there. Very interesting stuff. We're going to talk about this and a whole lot more on this Forbidden Door Sunday edition of Wrestling Observer Live. When we get back, we're going to be breaking down SmackDown, Forbidden Door, and a whole lot more. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Let's start off Friday night. I, I went to the garden. Nothing better. It, it's the summer. July is around the corner. I'm going on a hiatus with everything in the next couple days, taking a little vacation. I got to tell you, man, uh, nothing better than going to the garden on a Friday night. I took my kids. My wife came. I uh, had some tremendous seats for the show. Uh, man, that crowd, it was packed. That guard, it's amazing to see that building packed. And WWE realized this. Uh, you know, they had the short stage set up. And the lights were on on that building. <laughs> I've never seen, I've never been to a wrestling show, especially at the Garden, where the lights are so bright. They wanted you to see how many people they got in that building. And the way they shot it, you know, there was, um, there was a moment, I forgot who was coming down the aisle, right, down the ramp. And they did this um, almost like, a, like an upshot, you know, they were, it was angled. And, you could, and it looked like there was like 50,000 people in that building, the way it was shot. It looked tremendous. But this was a hot, hot crowd. It opened up with a, a bloodline brawl. Very similar to almost a year ago, SmackDown ran out the garden. And they did that infamous 38-minute opening bloodline segment where it turned into a brawl. I think Kevin Owens was involved in that one too. Do you remember that, MG? I do. I, I don't remember the, the specifics of it. I know it was long and everybody was into it the whole way. Um, yeah, but yeah, and Kevin Owens, it, this whole this whole thing, this is obviously leading to Cody, I think. But sure, yeah, yeah. I thought this was all fantastic. This opening yeah. segment was great. Uh, Bloodline came down to the ring. They got into a brawl with Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton. A solo and company were walking down. The Titan Tron showed Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton and uh, Cody Cody and Rhodes. Jeez, Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens arriving uh they got into a brawl the nypd was brought out cody didn't want to leave the ring and eventually got them out of the building all right cool tiffany stratton i should have put yeah i'm sorry but i should have put um air quote or quotes around nypd because yeah, those yeah. uniforms didn't fit i don't know <laughs> why the was that city issued i gotta call my buddy at the pba and see what's going on i don't think those were official issued nypd <laughs> uniforms uh but the crowd was hot for this i mean it, it's that crowd was filled with children, okay? Not in, I'm not saying that in like a negative way, right? 
Not like they were grown adults acting like this. It was a lot of families, a lot of kids. And these kids were hot for everything. For everything. Cody coming out. They erupted. They loved the bloodline. Very into it. Randy Orton, super over. It's amazing to me. You know, and a lot of these kids are, are young enough that they did not grow up with Randy Orton as their guy. And Randy has become this, like, you know, mythical S-level, special-level wrestler to them. And I think that's great. WWE's done a great job with that. There's a lot of longevity in that. You had a Money in the Bank qualifier. Tiffany Stratton defeated Candice LeRae and Jade Cargill. Jade got a great reaction here. Tiffany, too. They were very into Jade, though. That crowd. We went backstage. Solo Sokoa was, informing, was informed by Paul Heyman that Cody and Orton and Kevin were removed from the garden. Heyman then asked uh, where Jacob Fatu was. Sokoa tells him that Fatu was too dangerous to be in the building. A little bit of foreshadowing here, huh? Yes, this was good storytelling. Yeah. Uh, that he was, uh, Sokoa was going to make uh, Heyman his official wise man also. He also had another Money in the Bank qualifier. LA Knight defeated Logan Paul and Santos Escobar. This match went crazy. So, during the LA Knight comes out, huge reaction for LA Knight. The crowd is loving him. I mean, I don't know how it came. How did it come off on TV? Because on in the building, it was really loud. This whole it match came was off loud. same way, same way. It really was obvious, especially when they announced who you're about to talk about next. Yeah, well, uh, you know, he, so during the LA Knight entrance, Jalen Brunson of the New York Knicks was shown in the crowd to a massive, massive ovation. He also had a T-shirt for sale. And nothing better than this. You know, like, it's almost like they want... It's obviously... They're, they're shooting to an international or national crowd, right? That's who's watching. But in that building, none of that mattered. It was all about New York here and their hatred towards the Indiana Pacers. Logan Paul comes out, says that he has a corner, corner man, and it's Halliburton from the Pacers. <laughs> this was great. <laughs> the crowd was booing him like crazy. Crazy heat. And then there was a moment that Brunson got into it. Halliburton got into it. I, I wonder, I mean, it was, to me, if you're old enough, you remember. I mean, was it at the level of Rodman and Malone? No, but you know what? It was pretty good. That was good stuff. I don't know if you I don't, don't know care if about I basketball. It doesn't match. matter. No, you don't, don't want to. I want to see these guys in a match, but it, just just the pop they got was great. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. Great job with that. Uh, they did a very well done package for Sika that aired also. Money in the Bank qualifier. Naomi defeated Indy Hartwell and Blair Davenport. And now we come to the end. The Bloodline acknowledgement ceremony. This was oh. an incredible, incredible segment. This whole show was about the Bloodline. I mean, you got a two hour show about one story. Continue, it, it continued on. Um, you know, they are telling stories here. This was very different. Also, he, here's my negative here. By the way, the crowd was erupted, okay? The crowd was erupted. It went, they were going nuts. They were into everything. However, so much stop and go with TV. You know, <laughs> the lights are off. Like, uh, before, during that LA Knight match, right? LA Knight comes out. It's LA Knight and it's Escobar in the ring. It just goes quiet in the building. They dim the lights and they go. They play like commercials. They're like selling uh, the Fanatics convention at the Javits Center. They're selling this. Like it, it wasn't, you're not watching them in the ring waiting for their opponent. You're actually, the lights are dimmed and then it comes back to LA Knight's music blasting. It, it's a little weird how they do that. It's almost like, hey, we're, they're telling the audience, hey, we're on a break right now, so don't get excited for anything. And then when you come back, you know, get back into it. It was it was almost like being in front of a live studio audience. More than more than usual, because I've been a bunch of TV tapings. My perspective. We got this. We got the bloodline acknowledgement ceremony. Paul Heyman starts off with his usual opening. Saul Sokoa cuts him off before he could continue. Then that building starts. We want Roman chance going out going throughout the whole night. From the beginning segment, it was We Want Roman. Solo introduces the newest member to the bloodline, Jacob Fatu. A lot of people were into his theme. Did you read this on Twitter? It was really good. 
It's yeah, not yeah, bad. Yeah. I no, it's good, and they put some production into the entrance. So. Yeah, yeah, he's mm. a scary looking dude. Uh, Solo Sokoa comes out. He's uh, Solo Sokoa introduces Jacob Fatu as the latest member of the Bloodline, uh, which many lied to Heyman. Paul, yeah, Paul Heyman's facial expressions here were great, and it was right. He there, knew I it's coming. He, yeah, he he right there. He knew that he couldn't be a part of it anymore. Yeah, and that it, it was it was so apparent on his face. But he's he was doing once again. Paul's not sleeping. Yeah. He has bags under his eyes. His eyes are red. He hasn't oh. shaved. He's stressed. He doesn't know what to do. Everyone in the group is now acknowledging Solo. Then he goes to Heyman, and oh. Heyman looks broken. Heyman hesitates, and he says, "You are not my tribal chief." He gets Samoan spiked. Jacob Fatu does a diving headbutt. I cannot remember when the last time a diving headbutt was used outside of Benoit. It's been many, many years. They would ultimately give him a triple power bomb on the announce table, very reminiscent of the Shield. And that was it. Uh, I thought it was incredible. I thought it was incredible. Uh, it was a great SmackDown. They did a fantastic job here. Some issues, a lot of censoring by Fox, but that crowd was wild. A lot of naughty words were being said by that crowd all night. I had to plug my ears. I, ca I can't hear that kind of language. I don't speak like that. When we come back, we got a whole lot more to go into. Forbidden Door. Let's talk about it. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. MG, I know you had a question. Or a statement you wanted to make about Paul about the previous yeah so so I was I was thinking about this last night um in or yesterday afternoon is Paul Heyman not the best character actor in all of wrestling history there's been some good ones yeah. like uh Bobby Heenan and I even thought of because we were talking about Sika um Lou Albano going way way back but just how they are able to pro how he's able to progress the story and the little things he does do you i mean do you feel like this is like the best uh character actor we've ever seen well i mean look at how many companies he's been right uh, mm -hmm. i mean the longevity of paul Heyman, uh and, and it is sad that we got robbed of of quite a few years without paul in wrestling yeah you know people don't remember after that disastrous uh december to dismember ecw pay-per-view mm -hmm. he uh he left for a couple of years he wasn't very involved until they brought him back with cm punk and paul you know and then and, and the rest was history uh with brock lesnar um i the longevity that man has had in his career with uh you know being part of the nwa and wcw till till 93 and then even before that he was very involved with wrestling he was a photographer at 13 years old he would go to the garden yep. His father would drive him down and he would take photos and sell them to Vince Sr. for like $25 a pop. That, that's tremendous. He's always, you could tell this man, this is what he was meant to do. He loves everything about it. And that's why everything he does has substance. You know, yes, the, it I, has substance. Uh, you know, he's been around since 19, I think 1987. He started his first, uh, you know, he was managing on the independence in 87. And then he... Very quickly went to the NWA. The Alliance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it is. He has been a instrumental part of professional wrestling for the last uh, four decades. Well, my thing is, I think he knew he had to take a bump to sell the story. Yeah. And it's like, when do you do it? And he found the perfect spot, the perfect location, perfect venue. Timing was right. And he said, okay, I'm going to take a bump. Now, he'll probably yeah. be off TV for a few weeks, and then we're going to get the – when Roman comes back, it's going to rival Triple H's uh, 2002. Really. Yeah, it's going to be huge. In my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good stuff. WWE, very, very good stuff here. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see where it goes. I'm enjoying their TV. Something else I'm enjoying, which I'm going to be at, AEW Forbidden Door. I'm running out the door. I got to put on new, I got to put on a nice shirt, and I'm running out the door. I'm getting in my car. My Uber's going to be waiting for me. AW Collision last night from Buffalo. This was a fun show. Obviously, continued some pieces for the pay per view. Uh, what did you uh, What did you like the most out of this? 
Anything stand uh, out to you? There was a couple things. There was a couple things on here uh, that I found interesting. Um, there. Like I'm just trying to go through here. The 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 end, the way in at the end, uh, yeah. was really telling. Will Ospreay is really over. That's, really that's the biggest thing I think. Yeah, and I don't know if they're going to change the title here, but they, you know, they he got the one up at the end, so maybe that's a foreshadowing that he won't. But I don't know what they're going to do. But and there was one thing that I thought interesting is. They were telling the story that Swerve had no friends, and all of a sudden he shows up with this huge entourage. I know, from his I know, other world. <laughs> I know. I found some that of the, interesting. Some of the some of the key takeaways here, obviously, uh, Tomohiro Ishii's fantastic. Uh, him and Orange Cassidy defeated TMDK in, in, to start the show. Chris Jericho's learning tree. He's giving advice to everybody. He's just walking around in the back. This segment was great. He goes in the back and he tells he tells the <laughs> trainer that he's wrapping the wrists wrong. And and they steal the wrist tape. And he gives advice. He goes, you know, when you come in here, just put a couple so you don't have to pay for it. And then that was that was a tip. And they do that. Um, Mercedes got laid out by Zuxis and Vaker, setting up their match. Uh, Mercedes obvious. Mercedes obviously has to take this at this point. Uh, Serena Deep and Kelly Madden. Okay. Matt, she got on the mic after. Deep got on the mic and demanded a worthy opponent. Then Rio came out. So and looks accepted. like that match is happening soon. Yeah, yeah. More Jericho shenanigans backstage. He was preaching hygiene and making everyone wash their hands coming out of the bathroom. This is out of control. <laughs> then Jericho wanted to check. I, I laughed. I laughed so hard for that segment. <laughs> and then Jericho goes, I'm going to go check on the Zamboni crew. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, he ran into Joe and friends, and the brawl ended up happening. Uh, you know, they, it, I, I thought that was good. But here's the thing. Jeff Cobb will come out and save Jericho and the crew. He will be Big Bill and Jericho's tag partner at Forbidden Door. You know, they've gone 18 different ways with this. With this Jericho, like, he called Suzuki. I want to see that Suzuki singles match with him. That's something I want to see. That obviously did not happen. That'll happen. I'm curious if that'll happen next Wednesday on Dynamite. Oh yeah, maybe that. I mean, that that that's a great match to have. Why not? Hinch and Cerro defeated Kevin Blackwood in two minutes. Daniel Garcia versus the Butcher in a battle for Buffalo match happened. All right, that was cool. Daniel Garcia, a little emphasis on him, huh? They're they're starting to they're starting to put this. Because it was so heartbreaking. The last show that I went to was World's End. And in that scrum, like, he's talking. He's like, yeah, I want an opportunity. I want that opportunity. I think he deserves it. Sheeta defeated Deanna Perrazzo in the quarterfinal uh, match for the Owen Hart Women's Tournament. So this bracket is shaping up more and more. Jack Perry, El Fantasmo, and Takeshita defeated Mark Briscoe, Dante Martin, and Leo Rush. This match was based around, essentially, that Jack Perry didn't want to get in the match. <laughs> that was the whole point. And world champion weigh in for Forbidden Door main event. They were both stripped down to their shorts. Osprey weighed in at 220, Swerve at 230. Swerve said that he's a businessman and would offer Osprey's wife a contract. Then the brawl started. Swerve is great at getting under their skin. I mean, it's oh, really he's, he's really good at that couple other things we missed um, yeah, go ahead. that weren't really in the notes was um, uh, Hangman Page video package. Looks like he's coming back very soon. Yes, yeah, so he's that like was cool. Sad, depressed. Yeah. But <laughs> what depressing. side is he on? Yeah, that. It, yeah, and that's going to be a big, big story to tell. And then there was a Tony Storm uh, uh, vignette they showed where she's stomping on glass in her bare feet and gave this, like, produce like uh production and that was really well done too so yeah. getting ready for this so so it was a couple of good things collision was pretty good in, in all things considering yeah it wasn't bad at all a few highlights also uh probably before we get into forbidden door preview here tony khan was on brian and dave on wrestling observer radio it's on the website right now wrestlingobserver.com or f4wonline.com 
couple insights here. He said that they're very close to the deal being done. Once again, he said he's in the red zone. Maybe the 20. Maybe the 10. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. Uh, I thought it was insightful. I thought he gave a couple things. He did say that uh, David Zasloff is very happy with the relationship. Something I have said on this show and every other show numerous times. That the relationship is very strong. David Zasloff wants AEW programming on Turner. He also said that this is the strongest leader Turner has had. Possibly outside of Ted Turner. Since Ted Turner days. That they got a very strong leader. I don't know if that was more of a, hey, I'm a company man and I'm and I'm and I'm and I'm rah rahing you, or what that relationship prior to Zaslov coming to the helm was. Because Tony came in at a very tumultuous time. This company was merging, this company was changing. A lot of transition was happening. I'm curious on on where which side that, that statement falls on. It sounds like he was dealing with more heads like he was multiple people were involved in the conversations and uh, now he's dealing with one guy that might uh, be the biggest difference it's possible because nobody's talking anymore so that's a possibility he said it's, he's one of the strongest leaders he, uh he looks at wrestling on turner properties as an american institution and really wants to keep it going um i i think that's true i think pro wrestling on a turner property is is very much embedded in the history of cable television in this country Professional wrestling will always play a part in cable television and the success of cable. Success of TV. Just something that's always been there. Uh, he also mentioned that the pay-per-view distribution is largely pending on the distribution capabilities of Bleacher Report. But the media rights deal may change that. Uh, a lot of interesting tidbits here in this conversation about what's going on. But, I mean, listen, uh, you listen to the man speak. And it looks like they're headed right in the in the right direction here. I don't know what that means financially. We've all heard the rumors of what those numbers could be. We've heard the rumors of what he's spending on talent. I, I have no I don't know if that's accurate or if that's a typo, if that's wrong. Obviously, you could kind of put it together by how much certain people are getting paid and figure out the rest. But it's a very interesting time for Tony, especially today, going into this pay-per-view. Very soon. This may be the last pay-per-view without the announcement of a TV deal. Maybe they announce it at All In. Maybe they announce it right after this. But it's all positive. It looks positive from where we're at right now. I'll ask Tony in the scrum. I want to ask him a question about distribution and linear t TV and where we're headed. You know, we just got the report that less than 70 million households have cable television in America. Down from the 100 million plus that it was years prior. Maybe it's time to look at syndication and do a, do a uh, simulcast on digital. We'll find out. I'll ask him this. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Forbidden Door. Huge card here. 14 matches. Pre-show's 90 minutes. Billion matches on the show. This is going to be a really good wrestling show. I'm going to be there till five in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> For your sake, I hope not, but <laughs> let's go into this. Let's go into this card. Zero hour house of black Malachi and Brody versus private party versus Tomohiro Ishii and Kyle O'Reilly versus Gabe Kidd and Roderick Strong. All right. You know what? That's a fun zero hour opening match to have. But the big story of the zero hour match, I thought this was a big one. Mystico and the Lucha Brothers. Penta, Ray Phoenix, Mystico versus Titan, Yoda Suji, my favorite. And <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm joking here. And Takahashi. <clears throat> I, I'm looking forward to this. You know, uh, Dave actually stumped Tony. Tony said during the interview that this is the first time that this, something like this has ever happened, that, that Ray Phoenix and Penta are teaming up with Mystico. They're involved, and it is not. It is not the first time. About six or seven years ago, they ran a show. They did not do it under the Ray Phoenix and Penta name. It was, like, modified. And Tony was caught so off guard. Tony's like, really? I had no idea. <laughs> 
But this is actually really cool. Like, this is a really cool uh, matchup. I want to see Yoda Suji. I'm really excited to see him live. I think he's tremendous. I'd like to That'd see more. Cool. Yeah. Owen um, Hart Foundation. Quick, yeah, go ahead. So, so Mystico is CMLL, and the Lucha Brothers always worked for Triple A. So, I think that's where the big. So, for those that know, this is a big deal. I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big big deal. Uh, Own Heart Foundation Women's Tournament quarterfinals. Soraya and Mariah May. This is also on Zero Hour. We're not even on the main card yet, boys and girls. Zero Hour. Chris Statlander and Momo Watanabe versus Willow Nightingale and Tom Nakano. Tam Nakano. All right. Another great, you know, a lot of women's More matches here, too. More stardom involvements. Yeah. Yep. A lot of women's matches, stardom involvement. This is a very, uh, they, they got in everything. Essentially. Could some of these matches be removed? Uh, maybe. We'll see how long the show goes. <laughs> I'll tell you I'll tell you that when I get home. Two days from now. <laughs> I'm gonna get an angry text. <laughs> At one point oh yeah, one point I'm gonna melt. Well, you know, this is what I told Rich, right? Because we're going with the Matman crew. Um I'll obviously I'm gonna stay for the show. But if if this show runs late and I'm tired, I'm not staying for the scrum. I'm going home. I want to go to bed. I have not slept in days. The Learning Tree. Chris Jericho, Big Bill, and Jeff Cobb versus Samoa Joe Hook and Shibata. This should be a fun match. This version of Chris Jericho. The, uh, a bizarre one, but I'm into it. The Elite. Okada and the Young Bucks versus Tanahashi and the Acclaimed. Do you think this is going to be a comedy match or do you think they're going to take this serious and we're going to get an actual Okada match? I think we're going to get American Okada. The one that calls everybody the B word. And so I think, yeah, I might be more. Do people not like that gimmick? Because I have to tell you, I, 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 love I was, it. I I, I'm always great. concerned, right? When you get, when you get such a great wrestler. Right when you get someone at that level, and you put him on TV, obviously we know he's going to have great matches. But do they have it in them that charisma, which you see in the ring? I think it's don't. almost impossible. If you if you have that charisma in the ring, it's almost impossible for you not to have it if you're speaking. It's it's really those are anomalies. And a guy like Okada, he says four words and it's over. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Uh, I really like this version of him. I think it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Who takes this? I think. Oh, actually, let, I'm going right to go backwards. Right? I'm going to go backwards, and I'm going to go into who I think takes what, okay? Um, I'm going to go for zero hour. I'm going to go house. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go house of black for okay. zero hour for that one. Uh, Mystico and the Lucha Brothers. I think I'm going to go Mystico and the Lucha Brothers. Uh, Owen Hart Foundation Women's Tournament. Soraya Mariah May. I'm going Mariah May here. Yes, she has that's, to win. That's the, the story. story is, yep. Yep. Mm. Uh, Chris and Momo versus Willow and Tam. Tam. I'm going to go Willow and Tam. Learning Tree, Chris Jericho uh, and Jeff Cobb. I'm going to go with Joe, Hook, and Shibata. The Elite. Who takes this one? I think it's got to be the Elite. Got to be the Elite. That story. Yeah, because Even though we got a ton of do, do you? Yeah. yeah, do you want... Do you want Okada to lose? No. 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 And there's going to got... be a big pop moment when him and uh, Tanahashi oh, face yeah. off. Oh, the yeah. They're going to love gonna it. They're going to lose their minds. Yeah. Zack Sabre Jr., Orange Cassidy. Either one could win. I'll go with Zach. You're going to go Zach? Okay. I'll go Zach too. MJF, Heach, and Saro. MJF, obviously, big hometown welcome. Wrestling in Long Island at UBS Arena. He's going to get a huge reaction. I'm I'm very curious about this match, by the way. The style. Yeah. I wonder if there'll be run-ins here. I feel like there's there might be some something else happening with this match. You think so? Because on paper, we all think MJF is going to win, which I think he will. But I feel like there has to be more to it. Okay. Maybe. Mm. Owen Hart Foundation men's quarterfinal. Brian Danielson, Shingo Takagi. 
I'm going Danielson. Danielson, right? Danielson, however, let, let me let me jump ahead here. Danielson, in an interview with Sports Illustrated, said he doesn't think being a world champion is the right position for him anymore. He doesn't believe that it would be the best thing for his body. I think what we're gonna get, you know, you know how we should, what we should do. Somebody posted, and I wish I could find this online. Somebody sent this to me. Uh, there should be a reverse Montreal screw job with Danielson. <laughs> Where you actually put the title on him, you screw him over, and you you make him the champion. That's how they get the title on Danielson. They do a reverse Montreal. Has that ever been done? I'm sure it's been done in some way, but not. <laughs> I don't want the title. Tough, specific. tough. You know what? <laughs> You're getting it. I don't care. Uh, Danielson takes this. Uh, yeah. Would be a good chance. This is going to be a fun match. You also have here's the top of the card. IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. And, and by the way, I'm not going based on any particular order. This was just copied and pasted from wherever it was copied and pasted. IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. John Moxley defends against Naito. Does Moxley drop this title? Because you also have to remember, you got to keep this kind of balanced. New Japan has to come off pop, you know, good here. Well, I think going into the G1, they're going to want that title in... The G1. Yeah. I think Naito takes it back. Yeah, I Naito really taking this back here would be the right time to do this. That's fine. AW, uh, I'm, I'm very curious about this match. Uh, Naito has cooled off from me. I don't know if you feel the same way. I, on Dynamite, his entrance where he just kind of sauntered out. Very slowly. <laughs> close off very casually. <laughs> and then... Moxley meets him, and then they're just brawling. <laughs> yeah, Moxley's incredible. <laughs> AW Women's Championship. Tony Storm defense against Mina. Big I'm story. forward to this one. Well, there's a lot of story yeah. here with Mariah May yeah. and what mm -hmm. side. You know, mm -hmm. we saw on Dynamite that Mina, by mistake, hit Mariah in the head with a bottle of champagne that was aimed towards Tony. So there's oh. different variables here. What if, what mm -hmm. if, what if Mariah May turns on Tony? I mean, it, what if she turns on Mina? It's what it's if she very, turns on Mina? I almost think that's what's going to happen, but I think it, eventually the story is leading to... Um, I think Mariah May, May wins that Owen tournament and all in, that's... Both yeah. are from... Well, M Mina, or I'm sorry. She, Mariah. Mariah, I'm sorry. Mariah is from um, England, so this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's cool. Uh, TBS Championship and the New Japan Strong Women's Championship on the line. Title for title. Mercedes Monet, Stephanie Vacare. You know, that title was kind of set up for Mercedes to get. Uh, I think it's going back to Mercedes. She'll be a double champion here, winning the New Japan Strong Women's Championship and the TBS title in AEW. This eventually leads to, you know, hey, look, look how decorated I am. I want the world title. Yep. Or a Tony Sto or or... You know, a Britt Baker returns and challenges Mercedes for one of those belts or both of those belts. There's a lot that you could do that here. Would, yeah, that that would be, I think that would be a very intriguing uh, program if they get yeah, to that. Very. You have a ladder match for the vacant, the vacant TNT championship. I'm more curious what this match would have been for Edge. Hmm. Him in a forbidden know, door but... match? Some, I, I mean, you could have had a real forbidden door here with this. Him and Tanahashi. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you know. But I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, this match might steal the show. Mm. Th this this ladder match. Look at this. You got Takeshita, Mark Briscoe, Jack Perry, Leo Rush, Dante Martin, and El Fantasmo. This is gonna be crazy, crazy spots in this match. Top to bottom. And the main event, AEW World Champion, oh. Swerve Strickland. Defends against the AEW international champion, Will Ospreay. Is it Ospreay's moment? Do you hot potato this title? Is it too short for Swerve to hold the belt? This is very intriguing. It's very intriguing. Because you, have, you have a huge right? show in the UK coming up. Obviously, Ospreay will be a, play a huge part of that show. You also have the winner of the tournament, the Owen Hart tournament, getting a title shot at the show. So many variables with this. 
returns who's coming back who's going to be healthy what's the main event where's mjf in this where's hangman in this where's osprey in this Who remember wins the osprey tournament? is scheduled osprey is scheduled to defend the international title against uh um why um uh, what's his name i'm sorry <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna let you suffer for a little bit <laughs> can i can i give you a hint he's from buffalo yes. mm. <laughs> His brain just, my brain just melted. Daniel Garcia, is that the name you're seeking? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's him. That's him, the guy from Buffalo that he's that he's given a title shot to. Uh yeah, I I don't listen, listen d d should Osprey drop the title to Daniel Garcia? I don't know. It depends on how this night goes. Uh do we get a run in? Does Hangman come in and cost the title? You know, this is his revenge now. He cost swerved that title belt. These are all options. I'm looking forward to all of this. I I think tonight's show is going to be very telling about, you know, and listen, half of this is non-canon, which is good too. I like that the show does not necessarily, or I think it shouldn't, it shouldn't necessarily impact your storytelling over the next couple of weeks. Some stuff will. I like the show being non-canon of the best matches that you could possibly put on between two different rival organizations. I know now that's not the case, right? There's storyline. There's more intertwining relationships between these two. People are on both shows now. So I don't know if that's a possibility moving forward with this. But I can tell you, man, this looks like a really fun show. I'm looking forward to being there. It's going to be a long afternoon for me. And for many of you watching at home. <laughs> when we come back, we got a few more things to touch on. Wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, final few minutes of the show. It's Daniel Garcia. That's the name you were looking for, MG. <laughs> yep, it was. <laughs> Daniel Garcia from Buffalo. Buffalo's own Daniel Garcia. Uh, yeah, I I'm going to be at the show. I'm Ricky running... Starks for some reason. What, you were thinking Ricky Starks? Well, I don't know where Ricky yeah, is. Uh, that I don't know. Yeah, yeah it's a whole nother, whole nother story. But for yeah. some reason, that was a name that kept coming up in my brain. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm headed I'm running out the door in about a minute here, which I'm looking forward to. Going to the show, having a couple of drinks, watching some tremendous wrestling. Uh, just I wanted to touch on this since we're in New York. AW Grand Slam returns to New York September 25th. Ticketmaster listed the dates on their website, and they're running Arthur Ashe. You know there was a possibility uh, that they were not going to run Arthur Ashe. They were going to run Louis Armstrong Stadium, which is right next to it, right adjacent. This. This is the grounds of the Tennis Association, so there's different places, obviously, facilities there, uh, which is smaller. Uh, Louis Armstrong is about 13,000 people. Grand Slam is about 20. Maybe they're going to do something very special here. I'm also hearing we are, um, and I'll have more information next week, but apparently the July 17th episode of Dynamite will have a pay-per-view level main event. This is something that was passed on to me. I don't know what the main event is. But I was told that the July 17th edition of the show. Is that even the right date? Let's find out. Yeah, that is a Wednesday. Look at me. I know my dates. Uh, we'll have a main event that is a pay-per-view-esque level show. That's what I've said. I have no idea what, who's who the participants. We'll find out. I'll have more information next week. Guys, enjoy the pay-per-view Enjoy Forbidden Door. We're going to get some tremendous matches here. I'm out the door. I'm going to go change my shirt because I'm a professional. I'm going to head on the cross island and get to UBS Arena. Guys, we'll see you all next time on Wrestling Observer Live.